Adrenomatic Excel Carry Over Lead. Brought to you by the Shrimp Troll. Welcome back, baseball fans, to Game 5 of the 1972-75 World Series. They've been following along. Uh, home team had won the first three games, and the Reds fell behind, tied Game 4 a couple times. They lose an extra innings. A's are up 3-1. to one in the World Series, but there's optimism in Cincinnati. Today's matchups for the Oakland A's. Al Downing acquired in the Vita Blue deal, along with Don Wilson, 72, 99, 297 ERA, and a 203 innings. Mixed results this year. Hunter and Holtzman have clearly carried the A's. Don Wilson, Al Downing, not so much. And for the Cincinnati Reds, their ace, in a elimination game. They gotta win this one or it's over. For the home fans in Cincinnati, we bring in Gary Nolan. Could very well be the final card, final use of a 72 card before he has some orange in, in injuries and then he returns to baseball with a different card. 15 and five, buck 99 ERA in 176 innings and 19. 72, Al Downing, Gary Nolan from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. Gotta win this one, Cincinnati to make the series go back to Oakland. Leading off for the A's is Claudel Washington. Two eight rounds a third. Burke Campanaris, 44. Homer, one to 17. Double the rest, that's a double. Mike Hegan, 59. This guy's the center, only two outs. Reggie Jackson, 65, flies to center field. Bottom of the first, it'll be Joe Morgan, 63. Pitcher B. Pete Rose, 37. Grounds are short. Tony Perez, 54. Catcher's X. This is uh, Gene Tennis, a 47. Makes the play. Top of the second, it's Joe Rudy. 6'10. Third X. Third baseman is, uh, today it's Gilbreth, a 318. 318. Gives up an error. It's a shame. That's not bad defense either. Joe Rudy's on after another error. By an infielder. Had a lot this series, both teams. I think every Cincinnati infielder's made an error other than the first baseman. And uh, Campanaris has made an error for the A's, a couple of them. Sal Bando, 65. This guy's the center. Rusty Torres, batting seventh. 1 6. A single off his card to center field. That's a 187 hitter. Rudy will not take on. Uh, the minus two arm of Bobby Tolan. Good base runner, though. First and second, one out. Gene Tennis. 211, flies to right. No tag up opportunity there. He didn't go to third. I'm a two out, stick green. 33, grounds to third. So, once again, you've seen this pattern where Oakland has not really taken a lot of chances. They don't feel like they need to. They'd rather just force you to get them out 27 times. Uh, they've also, uh, defensively, they've often not brought the infield up in situations, and the Reds have occasionally benefited from that. Bottom of the second, it's Johnny Bench. 49 off downing, a single one of eight. He cannot get it on a 19. Bobby Tolan, 57, is a base hit. Double-A stealer, he's been taking off every opportunity against tennis. He's safe again. Runner second, one out for Concepcion. 38 is a walk. They're very good against lefties, those Cincinnati. This is their best opportunity to have a big offensive game. Al Downing, the number four starter. George Foster. 58 for George is a pop to second. Big moment with two outs. Rod Gilbreth. 56. Sky to center field. We go to the third. It's Claude Al Washington. 57's a K. Burke Campanaris. 69. Center. And with two outs, Mike Keegan. 58. Pops to second. Gary Nolan, by the way, 
this card uh, was the World Series MVP two years ago against the A's. Won two of the games, two of the four wins. Went to Gary Nolan. Got the – in a much – there's a lot of guys who could have won it. It's a, like a three-way tie, but Nolan ended up getting the award, and they really need him today. He pitched very well in game one, but Catfish Hunter pitched better in a 3-1 defeat. All right. Bottom of the third, Bob Barton. 1-6 is ball four. Joe Morgan. They need him to get going. 110 is a fly ball to right against a left-handed pitcher. Yeah, he does not have a column of hits against the lefties with a 327 average. That's mostly because of the 127 walks. Excuse me, 132 walks. So they have a tendency to do that. Replace the would-be hits with walks. Pete Rose won six against the lefties, double one of 14. It's a two-base hit. Pete's had a nice series. Second and third, one out. And again, they're going to play back. 39 is ball four. Now they're really going to play back. Bench had two double plays in the previous game. Got to stay out of that if you can. Bases loaded, one out. Here's the pitch to Johnny Bench. 59 off of uh, Downing is a pop to first base. No RBI. Base is still loaded with two outs now. And Bobby Tolan. 1-7 is a K. Oh, the Reds. Five base runners through three. We go to the fourth. It'll be Reggie. 6-10 off Nolan is third X. Again, a 3-18 defense. Again, it's a single. Now, Dennis Mankey isn't that good against lefties, but he's a 2-E15 defensively. And Gilbreth is a 3-E18. It's not a huge drop-off, but... Those are costly. Reggie, the ace stealer. Joe Rudy's the batter. Nolan is better against lefties and righties. Rudy will hit away. 2-7. That's a base hit through the hole in the infield from holding the runner on at first. You're holding Reggie Jackson, an ace stealer. And we get the plus. A big break for the A's here in the fourth. The Reds. Down 3-1 in the series. Boy, they're really having their buttons pushed, aren't they? Gosh, I hate bringing the infield up with nobody out. But the next hitter, Rusty Torres, is terrible. So why not bring it up so Banda doesn't get a cheap RBI and take your chances with Torres? So they'll bring it up for Banda. 52 pops to first. Now you got Rusty Torres. Looking at the amount of ground ball bees on his card, and he has, well, he's got several, actually, in all the columns. So we're going to bring the infield up. We don't want him to get a cheap run. 48 off of Nolan is second X with the infield up. This is Morgan. He's the one. Makes the play. So the runner holds. The runner behind him from first goes to second. You got second and third, two outs. And Gene Tennis, IRL, or in real life as we like to say, was a big uh, World Series star. Let's see what he does here with two outs and two on. 4-4 four, four off Gary Nolan. Is this history? Homer. 1 to 17, double the rest, it is gone! Gene Tennis with a two out, three run home run in the top of the fourth inning. And the Oakland A's have a three nothing lead in a potential clinching game. We can even say the Reds have down to their last 18 outs. That's how Dyer just became. Gene Tennis had a World Series, I think he had three home runs, maybe three or four. This is his first one, but it's Damaging. Dick Green, 53. First C. Reds, got to get a crooked number inning or two or three against Al Downing. Now, Al Downing's a, granted, he's a good pitcher, but he's the weakest of the uh, Oakland starters. In the bottom of the fourth, Reds are still very good against lefties. Dave Concepcion, 39 is a K. George Foster, 58. Pops to second base. And Rod Gilbreth, 67, is a strikeout. So maybe it's for this game the Vita Blue trade is finally paying off. It was a big deal in the offseason, trading the 1971 Cy Young winner, mostly because he would never replicate that incredible dominance. They sent Vita Blue to the expansion Ohio team, Ohio players, and they got. Don Wilson, Al Downing in return. These guys are on the short ends of their career. Tragically for Don Wilson, he passes away after 74. Al Downing, his career ends by 75. 
Vita Blue is an asset for that expansion team. He'll pitch all the way into the early 1980s. But right now, through four frames, three zip Oakland. Top of the fifth, Claude L. Washington. 33, pops the third. Bert Campanaris, 2 6 for Bert. Double one to five. It's a double. Mike Hegan, 65 off Nolan, flies the center. And with two outs, it's Reggie. Started the last inning rally with a single. Reggie, 36. That's ball four. Two on, two outs. Game's getting kind of short here for Nolan. He's got to get the two out batter that he didn't get in the previous inning. Joe Rudy, who had the walk, the game winning homer in the 10th inning of game four. Two on, two outs here in game five. Here's the pitch. 68 off Nolan is a pop to second base. We got a ball game, folks. Just three zip. Bottom of the fifth. Let's pause a moment for station identification. This is the Shrimp Trawler video channel. Este es el canal de videos de camaroneros. All right, bottom of the fifth. It'll be Bob Barton. 46 is a K. Joe Morgan, 110. He did the same thing earlier. That's an out with a 75 MVP card. Doesn't have a hit in the one column in that particular role. And he hit it two out of three times in an elimination game. This is horrible bad luck for the Reds. Got to turn it around. Pete Rose. 64 for Pete is third X. Bando, he's a 2E22 at third. It's going to be an error. The way you look at this, 18 makes an error and he's a 22, which is worse. So the error stands up. Now you got Tony Perez. 1-7 is a strikeout. Or 1-7 is, I'm sorry, is a ground ball to short. 3-0 game into the sixth. It'll be Sal Bando. 1-6, let's take a look at Bando's card of 1973. Um, the only year better might have been 69. Bando is really outstanding with 30-some homers. But 73 Bando is the best year in the dynasty. 286 with 29 bombs and 82 walks. 1-6, homer, 1-12, to double the rest. And when we look up, it is gone. Sal Bando, he had a big base clearing double in this series. Right now, Oakland's looking for MVPs. Who you pick? It's a complete team effort. Uh, the bullpen picked up Catfish Hunter. Catfish Hunter got a win. Holstrom's gotten a win. Um, you've had big moments by Joe Rudy, Sal Bando, and... So, yeah, that's where we're at at this point. 4 nothing game. Rusty Torres, 66. Lines a second. Gene Tennis, 6'10". This is second X. Third X, excuse me. Third base, skill breath, 318. Makes the play this time. Just some mock applause. His errors haven't hurt the team. I guess the one did, did it not? Yeah, it did. And Dick Green, 38. Is a strikeout. If you're keeping track of the Cincinnati Reds, so we played a World Series against Baltimore. They lost four straight, just like history said. Then we played a World Series against Oakland, and they won in seven games, flipping that result. This is the third World Series the Reds have been in the last five years, and rightly so, the dominant team. Pirates and the New York Mets were in the other World Series in this time. Bottom of the sixth, they need something here. It'll be Johnny Bench. Johnny, 64 off of Downing. This is third X. This again is Bando. I mean, we might have an error already. Yeah, we do. Still set for 18. It's been set there the whole time, and all three guys have kicked it. So it's an error on Bando to start the sixth inning. Now you got Bobby Tolan. 2 8 is a base hit. Here come the Reds. Got to do something here. Now, Oakland, you can't let Al Downing out there forever. You got a great bullpen. Had a little bit of usage in game four, but not a lot. Each guy pitched about an inning, maybe two-thirds of an inning. So everybody's available with uh, 12 outs to get. Four-nothing game. Got to give Al Downing a little bit of rope here. Here's Dave Concepcion. 2-7. That's a strikeout for the all-star shortstop. Now George Foster. Big moment here for the 1975 card. 5-11. Right X. This is Reggie. Here we go. 
A two E9 in right field. Not a three, a two. E9 in right field. He fly ball nine. He maybe doesn't catch that in his New York years with the Yankees when his defense suffered. He was often a 4 E15 out there. But he makes the catch here in Oakland. And with two outs, that's Rod Gilbreth. Boy, talk about a kid on the hot seat. An error, a single, a run that scored on his defense. And now he's got two on and two outs. Big hit, big at bat for Rod Gilbreth. Here's the pitch. 310 is hit by the pitch, and this will get you to Bob Barton. Let's take a look at the card. Bob Barton. So it, he was a Padre in 74. He had been with Cincinnati previously. Hits just 235 with a card, but against lefties, that's a nice on base percentage. Can't hit a home run. If you're thinking about the granny, I got some bad news for you. Don Mentor doesn't have power against lefties. Cesar Geronimo doesn't either. Dennis Menke has power against lefties, but Al Dowling only has a 1-4 to four chance. And Barton and Menke have similar walks on the card. So we're just leaving this thing alone and see if Bob Barton can keep this inning going with the bases loaded and two outs. Here's the pitch. 67 is off the downing card, and it's a strikeout. That's a strikeout for everybody. And this is right now the story of the series. That is that Catfish Hunter started to fade in Game 4. Reds caught him, passed him, took a lead, but they could not hold on. They had failures in the bullpen. Oakland's bullpen was better. They took the 3-1 series lead, and now they can't touch Al Downing. Al Downing, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 base runners. Uh, an error in there. Some walks. But it's 4 nothing. And actually, the Reds had scored in all the games by the sixth inning. This is their worst offensive performance. The Reds laid an egg against the Baltimore Orioles in that World Series, and they're doing the same thing this time with Oakland. Top of the seventh inning, Gary Nolan's a starter seven. There's nobody better starting for this team. So we'll continue. Claude L. Washington. 111, flies to right. Bert Campanaris, 55, short X, Concepcion, a 2E21, makes the play. Mike Hegan, 67, is a strikeout. Gary Nolan, two unfortunate long balls. Uh, one on the Gary Nolan card against righties, the other one off of Bando's card. But this home run only happened because an infielder gave up a base runner with a single. So that is a real tough story to sell Cincinnati right now. So go to the bottom of the seventh. Let's check one more time if there's any more defensive replacements. Nope. All the good defense of Oakland is in there. Seventh inning stretch in Cincinnati. We got something special today. We have the King Tubby playlist. The great African roots dub of King, du King Tubby. This playlist I often play. 90 songs, about five hours. Try to change a pace after the Cincinnati lost game four to this. King Tubby, brilliant. Back to the game. They need to get hot now. They need to get it going against Al Downing. It will be Joe Morgan, the top of the lineup. He is 0 for 3 in a potential elimination game. This could be the final at bat. Well, no. Chances are Morgan will get Morgan, the top, will probably get the bat again in the ninth. Joe Morgan, 33 is a grounder to the pitcher. Pete Rose, 2-5, grounds the third. And with two outs, it's Tony Perez. He's walked today. 46 off Al Downing is a strikeout. The best start of the season for Al Downing. You're watching it, folks. This is it. Seven shutout innings for Al Downing. A guy who would have faced the Reds plenty of times. As a member of the Dodgers in the early 1970s. But now he's a member of the Oakland A's. And he's got the Reds in some serious trouble today. With a 4-0 lead. It's stunning here in Cincinnati as the crowd is quiet. We mentioned something earlier too. That coming into the World Series. The Reds had ripped off 14 out of 15. They went on a torrid streak. 14-1. and 
Matter of fact, in the elimination game in the league championship series against Atlanta, the last game they played before today, they had 27 base runners uh, and won 8-6. to six. Left a lot of guys on base, but they've had 27 men reach base in that game. So the Reds were scalding. But then Oakland's pitching staff showed up. It's been a different story. We go to the 8th. Gary Nolan will continue. He'll face Reggie Jackson. One seven for Reggie is a clean double to center field. Oh boy. Now you got Rudy and Bando. Torres tennis green. And at this point, it might be time to call it a day for Gary Nolan here. And you just go to Clay Carroll, because we've hardly seen Clay Carroll at all in this series. The, the brilliant red closer. 19, we're going to bring him in because this is their season. And he's got to slam the door on all these guys. 72, Clay Carroll. 6 and 4, 2 and a quarter ERA in 96 innings. Had MVP votes um, in that year. Top 10 MVP votes for Clay Carroll, the National League of 1972. A uh, little worse against lefties. But he's got Rudy Bando. Rusty Torres is not much of a lefty. Gene Tennis and Dick Green. Have to make sure this guy doesn't score. Clay Carroll in the eighth. He'll face Joe Rudy. And we saw this situation. This situation played out in game four where Joe Rudy bunted the runner over on the road. trying And, and he, the bunt worked, but the runner didn't score. And Joe Rudy, he's going to do the same thing here for this insurance run. Joe Rudy's going to bunt. The bunt is nine. It's a good bunt. Now, if he swings away, he gets a clean single off his card. But uh, that's uh, the revisionist way of looking at things. Yeah, he's a 305 hitter, so it's somewhat silly to bunt a 305 hitter. You just cost your team a run, probably. But we got a runner at third, one out. They got to bring the infield up, and it's Sal Bando who homered earlier. 32 of the infield up is short B. They get what they needed. Concepcion guns it down to Johnny Bench, out at the plate. Bando's at first, and it'll be Rusty Torres. 1-4 is a grounder to the pitcher. We've got a ball game. And now you got to wonder, the Al Downing performance, you don't want to make a mistake here and ruin it for him. Do you pull a pitcher with a shutout? You have a righty, lefty, righty, righty. Dare we have the guts, do the Oakland A's have the guts to pull Al Downing with a shutout just to configure their great bullpen? Bench is better against lefties, as is Tolan, as is Concepcion, as is Foster, Gilbert, and Barton. This is like, as strange as it is to say, this is no-brainer. We are pulling Al Downing after throwing a shutout in an elimination game of a World Series. 4 nothing. That's how confident, I guess when you're up three games to one, you got a little bit of house money to play with. Still, you are making it difficult for Oakland fans here, who are nervous now. Jim Todd will come in. He was brilliant in game four, only won an inning, so he can go an inning today. Jim Todd in 1975, not in the dynasty, post dynasty Jim Todd, eight and three, two and a quarter ERA, 122 innings. And he will face in the eighth inning. He will start the eighth inning. And he will face Johnny Bench with six outs to go. And here's the pitch to Johnny Bench. 49 off of Todd is second X. This is Dick Green. He's a 2 e 8 Not quite as good as Morgan, but close. He makes the play. Now you got Bobby Tolan. This could be Bobby Tolan's final. Let me drop this card. On the ground. This could be Bobby Tolan's final at bat with the Cincinnati Reds. They need to make room for Ken Griffey in the offseason. He's had a pretty good year. He needs to get on now. Here's the pitch to Bobby Tolan. 37 is a walk. Bobby Tolan reaches base three times today, having the best day of any red player. And now you have Concepcion with a runner at first. Dare you steal down four. I don't think I just don't think you can do that. Concepcion, you gotta stay out of a double play. Uh, they are they, holding the runner. In the ninth inning, uh, he just goes down to second base on the catcher's indifference. They do hold the runners in the eighth the way I play it, so he will be held. 
And Dave Concepcion will swing away. 45 off Todd Connects. Double one of four. It is a base hit. Dot, dot. And the Reds got it going here in the eighth with runners in the corners and one out. Trying to rally. Has Oakland made a mistake by pulling Al Downing? He's watching nervously in the dugout. Wondering why his masterpiece was not extended with a towel around his head, but he's focused laser in on this contest. Al Downing in the Oakland dugout. Runners on the corners. Speed on the corners. George Foster. They're going to play back and hold. They don't need to bring it up with a four-run lead. Here's the pitch to George Foster. 37 for Foster. This is big. Single, one of 15. Gets a 15 exactly. The maximum you can get on that roll. Single, one of 15 for Foster. Gets it. It's a 4-1 game, and the Cincinnati Reds will have a, t a tying run come to the plate in the eighth inning. First and second. Concepcion stays at second base. Foster at first. It's 4-1. You've got Gilbreth, Barton on the bench. Here's the where it gets tricky. you got Mincher, a lefty, Geronimo, a lefty, Mankey, a righty. you got Dave Hamilton, a lefty, warming for Oakland, Raleigh Fingers. Gilbreth, you still need at least a base runner, if not a home run. You could do a double pinch hitter move. You can go Don Mincher, then Oakland goes Dave Hamilton, and then you go Dennis Mankey. And that would be a neat little trick, as Hamilton would have to pitch to him. That is the scenario we're looking at here. Dave Hamilton, taking a quick peek again at him in the bullpen. Or you could go Bob Locker if they introduce Mincher, guaranteeing that uh, you can't get a righty hitting off the lefty Hamilton in that scenario. So there's movement, and Gilbreth will be lifted for a pinch hitter. They're going to assume they're just going to go for the three-run homer, and the pinch hitter is going to be Don Mincher. Let's take a look at Mincher here. Can't be any bigger than this. Oh, by the way, guess what? Don Mincher? Yeah, he played for the Oakland A's in 1972. Uh, probably played in the World Series against the Reds. Hit 216, but plenty of homers and walks on his card. Um, so there's two on and one out. And Oakland's having a mound visit, and I think they're going to make a change. They're five outs away from winning the World Series, folks. And they like Bob Locker against the lefty. We tried this in Game 4. This exact same replay of Game 4. Bob Locker faced one batter. He had a comebacker to the mound, and he kicked it. Locker also had a bad inning earlier in Game 3. This is a risky move for Oakland yet again, as with Raleigh Fingers, you know, waiting in the wings, wondering why did you just bring him in? So that's the move. Jim Todd is gone. Plus, if this thing goes extra innings, the A's are in trouble. They're playing with house money. They're playing three to one, and they're like it. They're throwing all their switches. So Bob Locker indeed does come in here as the what you call righty who gets lefties out. No home runs on his card against lefties. Single one of five on six. A strikeout on nine. You just, he's one of the tougher right-handed pitchers against lefties. In the eighth, they didn't want to get trapped into Dave Hamilton facing a power hitter. A right-handed power hitter. So they will permit Don Mincher to face Bob Locker and take their chances. Again, Mincher on his own card, he's got a home run 3-2 and a 16 on 3-3. But that's still neutralized a little bit by Bob Locker. So first and second, one out, playing back, looking for a double play. And here's the pitch to Don Mincher. 69 off of Locker is a liner to first. And with two outs now, it's Bob Barton. Probably won't bat. You can go Mankey. You can go Cesar Geronimo. If you go Cesar Geronimo, the most likely will go to Dave Hamilton with Joe Morgan, another lefty on deck, and then turn it over to Fingers. Do you want to fall for that trap, Cincinnati? Mankey also doesn't have power versus righties. Bob Barton and Dennis Mankey, comparably, well, you know, Dennis Mankey made the double play in game uh, four, unfortunately, 
This is a different situation. It's two outs. He's got more on bases, and he needs to get into the game anyway to play third base because we pulled Gilbreth. So here's your pinch hitter. Let's take a look at Dennis Menke. On base machine as a home run his card. Um, in a 4-1 game. Uh, locker, not so great against righties. And Locker will pitch to him. You know, Locker's got a homer chance on his card, but Mankey can't convert that. So it'll be Dennis Mankey. The fans are murmuring because he's the guy who ground into a double play to end game four. Here's the pitch to Dennis Mankey. 45 off of Locker converts. It's triple, one to eight. It's the triple for Dennis Mankey. Big turnaround after game four. It's a two-run triple, and the Reds make it four to three. And look out now, it's Joe Morgan. And this is probably going to be the one batter for Dave Hamilton, and then the game still goes after that. We're going to get our fingers. So Locker leaves after a, a third. I know he's good about getting lefties out, but Dave Hamilton is Dave Hamilton. If he's going to play, this is the guy you've been eyeing the whole time, Joe Morgan. So... Dave Hamilton comes out of the bullpen, the third pitcher of the inning, trying to secure this game. It's gotten out of control here. 7-4, and four, 315 ERA in 117 innings. Oakland's bullpen has been brilliant all year. But these are the Cincinnati Reds against the wall, folks. I mean, this is supposed to go six, seven-game series. It'd be stunning to for Oakland to dismiss them in five. So the tie run at third, and Joe Morgan at the plate, um... Dave Hamilton will come on in the eighth and face Joe Morgan with a tying run at third and two outs. Now, if you want to talk about changing your luck, against the lefty Al Downing, he rolled a 110 twice. You have to think something better is going to happen for Joe Morgan. So here we go. Infield uh, playing back because there's two outs. Runner at third. Here is the pitch. Joe Morgan. One seven, Joe Morgan. Let's take a look at the card. We didn't show it before. You see the one ten out that he committed earlier twice. Missed it. This time, it's the base hit. It's the Cincinnati Reds using the same magic they used in the World Series two years ago against the A's. When they came back in game six and game seven, late in the game, late in the contest, and Oakland's seeing some deja vu. It's a four run inning. Getting hits off of Todd and Locker and now Hamilton. And Molly Fingers is beside himself, as is Al Downing. Joe Morgan making all the moves correct. Mankey and Mincher and so forth. It's a 4-4 tie. And now Morgan, oh yeah, oh, he'll take off for second base. Joe Morgan's going to attempt a steal. And he's thrown out on a 20. Wow. So Morgan attempts to steal to get in a scoring position in a 4-4 game. Gets gunned down to end the eighth inning. What a ball game. What a series. Can the Reds do this? Can they start a comeback? 3-1. Everybody's staying in their seats in Cincinnati. Their team came back with six outs remaining down four to tie it. Into the ninth. Clay Carroll is a relief three. Most likely will pitch all three if it goes that far. No reason to take him out. It'll be Gene Tennis leading off in the ninth. By the way, defensively, we took out a third baseman in DH, and we add a third baseman in DH. Geronimo is still available on the bench, but you've got Tolan and George Foster in the outfield with Rose, so you don't need Geronimo yet. Clay Carroll will face Gene Tennis leading off in the ninth. He had the big three-run homer earlier. Not a lot of noise out of Oakland, except for the home runs. With uh, So here we go, Gene Tennis. 46 lines left. Dick Green, 57 is a K, and with two outs, it's back up top to Claudel Washington. 68, that'll be a base hit. Now, do you try and steal a base with two outs against Johnny Bench? They tried this exact same thing in, in game five, and he got gunned down. They're going to try it again. This is the third attempt against Bench in the series. And he's gunned down on the 13, Oakland. Finally trying something risky, and it doesn't work at all. Boy, the momentum has clearly swung to the Reds. Bottom of the ninth. 
And I think you just have to go Raleigh Fingers. And here's another scenario. If this thing goes three, four, five extra innings and the Reds walk it off, you're not going to have Raleigh Fingers for game six. But uh, you do not want um, Dave Hamilton to face Rose, Perez, Bench, Tolan kills lefties as well, Concepcion and Foster. Yeah, so his day is done. And it is Raleigh Fingers and a tie game coming on in the ninth. A little different scenario. Lot, little different scenario. This He should be pitching f to win the World Series right now, and he isn't. So Raleigh Fingers comes on in the ninth. He will face Pete Rose. 5-10. He strikes him out. Tony Perez. 6-11. First X. This is Hegan. A 2-E-10. He commits an error. Boy, these infields have made some errors. Big ones in this series. Now you've got Johnny Bench, another MVP. We got five or six of them in this game. The pitch to Johnny Bench. 56 off fingers as a K. And with two outs, it's Bobby Tolan. He's reached three times. He started the rally with a walk. Here's the pitch to Bobby Tolan. 1-3. He pops to first base. We got bonus baseball. Bonus baseball in Cincinnati. This is going to be Clay Carroll's third and final inning. Bourbon, not available. It's going to have to be Aker and Riddleberger if this game continues. Bourbon had the long four-inning stint and the extra inning loss. So here we go. Top of the 10th, Burt Campanaris. 2-8. That's going to be a single. Oh, oh boy, folks. And now you got two lefties. This is not where Carroll wants to be. If you're thinking of pulling Carroll after two innings just to get a lefty in there, I mean, that that potential exists, and then you go to a righty. But it's Jack Aker at that point, and then that's all you got. Clay Carroll is your guy. You just have to live and die and do whatever with Clay Carroll in this situation. Mike Hegan will bat against him. Here's the pitch. 65, he converts. It's triple. 1 to 18, double the rest, and it is the triple. Oh, boy. Red fans are going to get on that. That Clay Carroll was kept in the game to face a lefty, Mike Hegan, and he delivers a triple. Now, you really lose the leverage just to get the lefty versus Reggie with the base open. They're going to bring the infield up and they'll face Reggie. Here's the pitch to Reggie. 5-10, you got catcher's card. Got to get the foul out. Or a ground ball C or B for bench. Ground ball B is the number at the plate, is it not? If we get that, catcher, 1-E-9. I don't think ones, catchers, have ground ball B as of an availability. So bench is a 1-E-9 catcher. You just have to avoid a wild pitcher pass ball here. You get the foul out. There it is. Johnny Bench, no pass ball, wild pitch. Red's still in this thing. Now you got Joe Rudy, infield up. This guy has bunted twice in the last two games. And uh, I know what you're thinking, but I don't like to do that without a second runner on base. So I'm not. I'm going to swing away from here, of course, with Joe Rudy with a runner at third. Here's the pitch. 57, he strikes out. And with two outs, it's Sal Bando. 310 for Bando is a fly to left field. So the Reds, again, same situation as the previous game. Got into that extra inning affair. And Joe Rudy was the hero yesterday. Mike Hegan's the hero today. Bottom of the 10th, Raleigh Fingers. You've got Geronimo's on the bench. He could bat in this situation. He has power, and, and Fingers does give up homers to lefties. Uh, you'd probably have him bat for Mankey. If it were to come to that. So leading off in the bottom of the inning. It's Dave Concepcion. 48 off of fingers is a walk. Now you got an ace stealer. You got a zero arm catcher. And we are like really pushing the numbers here. Concepcion. Do you steal now? Do you steal later in this inning? You got to look at the Foster double plays on his card. But I think you got to go for the plus. You got to go for the two run homer to walk the thing off. At least with nobody out. Maybe with two outs, the, he steals to get in a scoring position. But 
He's being held on base because it's he's the tie run. So it'll be George Foster. Nobody out and runner at first. Here's the pitch to George Foster. 57th a strikeout. Now you got Don Mincher. Now this is looking good. This is the pinch hitter. Uh, he faced Locker before. And now he's facing a pitcher who gives up homers to lefties. Fingers does do this. It's a better chance for Mincher with a runner at first. And one out. Here's the pitch to Don Mincher. 2-4. He got to stay out of the double play. He cannot stand. Let's take a look at the Mincher card. This is a brutal way to end a World Series. Don Mincher... It's a 4-6-3 double play. Oh, the Reds have really been, been victimized by some horrible breaks in this series. The Mankey double play and the Mincher double play in back-to-back -back games. Both guys on base machines. And you just get a double play at the worst possible time. Raleigh Fingers magic. This is the end of the World Series. Don Mincher. 2-4 is a 4-6-3 double play. And that is the end of the World Series to a stunned, disappointed Cincinnati uh, team. Bourbon lost yesterday in four innings of relief. Clay Carroll loses today in three innings of relief. Interesting, the Reds pushed the buttons to get all these extra uh, guys in the bench to make the plays off the changing pitchers to tie the game up, while Oakland um, didn't. Oakland just went with the starting lineup. They didn't pull Clay Carroll, the Cincinnati closer. They rolled with what they had. They got a timely hit. That's all they needed. And that's how the World Series ends. Five to four, Oakland. My goodness. And you could say, well, why didn't you steal Concepcion? And then you get thrown out of the inning, and yeah. Concepcion against tennis the double a's were stealing tolan was stealing morgan was stealing morgan got caught stealing in the eighth inning it's a double a morgan got caught stealing earlier in the series as did tolan as did a lot of great base stealers in my league and i was not going to let cincinnati lose a world series with a caught stealing so there it is five four is your final we'll just take this right to the post game Oh my goodness, the Oakland A's break them up. They won their World Series they were supposed to win. They win three in a row. They'd be very fortunate to get another one. They have this one. Clay Carroll unfortunately takes a loss. A line very similar to Pedro Bourbon. Four hits, a run allowed, and two Ks. And that's it, Gary Nolan. Seven hits and the four runs. Oakland put three men on, they all scored. Put a man on here, they all scored. A walk and three strikeouts. Raleigh Fingers gets a victory to go with all the saves. He put one man on, plus an error. A walk and three Ks in two innings for Raleigh Fingers. Well worth it. This crazy eighth inning, Jim Todd... Um, pitched through to Tolan and Concepcion, then was lifted. And Foster. He pitched through to all three of those guys, then was lifted. Bob Locker. Hamilton faced Joe Morgan. Locker faced Mincher. Jim Todd started the inning facing Johnny Bench. So all these men here are Todd's. That's two hits, three runs, and a walk. That's for Todd. Then we had Locker face Don Mincher. Got him out. But then he gave up a triple to Mankey. And that guy scored. So a hit and a run off of Locker. And then Joe Morgan, Hamilton got the hit off of Morgan. Then he got caught stealing. So Hamilton did surrender the hit, but got out of the inning on the caught stealing. Meanwhile, Al Downing, so that's uh, four runs on four hits and two walks. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six base runners at the end there. Meanwhile, Al Downing, no decision. 
they may not remember that how great this is. They'll remember the end of this game, but you got to remember Al Downing's seven brilliant innings of three-hit ball. Three-hitter for Al Downing, walked four, struck out seven. And there it is, 1 double 0 10, 0 1 0 10, 5 11 4 7. 5 11 4 7, 1 5 6 10, 6 10 1 5. Game 5 of the World Series. Gosh, it's kind of heartbreaking. I had the feeling Oakland was going to win this thing, but I thought it would go 7. Just a lot of decisions late in the game. Some worked out. Some did not. The eighth inning worked perfectly for Cincinnati and made Oakland look foolish. But in the ninth inning, it's Don Mincher and Dennis Menke in the previous game. That just will kill you. And now the Reds. You know, they did lose in real life. The 1970 and 1972 World Series. They shed no tears for the Reds. We got a third World Series appearance in there that they won. Also, in 75 and 76, they'll win the World Series in real life. And Ken Griffey's coming on board next year and some more guys. So the Reds, they're going to, and we could see Oakland and Cincinnati more, folks. We could see a rubber match as far as World Series go. So there we go. Cincinnati's 31 and 20, hitting 285 with a 415 ERA. That was Clay Carroll's first loss of the year. For Bone, that was only his second loss of the year. Johnny Bench finishes with 18 homers and 51 RBIs. We'll do a um, stat wrap-up in a separate video. 31 and 20 for the Reds. We'll plug that in here. Thirty-one and twenty for the Reds and the Oakland A's. Well, they just had an amazing year. Oakland A's, look at this, thirty-five and thirteen. Yeah, that's it's like one of those Final Four basketball teams record. I mean, that's amazing. Raleigh Fingers, seventeen saves in forty-eight games, folks. Twenty-five and a third innings. You have two runs. Twenty-five and a third innings. Catfish Hunter, 14 and 1. Kenny Holtzman, 10 and 3. Just too much pitching for Oakland. And the Reds just couldn't keep up with that. Bando has 9 home runs. Tennis has 11 home runs. 35 and 13, Oakland. Uh, this is the record of the Pirates, I think, a year ago. Or, no, this was the record of, of the Reds when they won the World Series a few years ago. 35 13, Oakland. Winning the World Series. Four games to one. That'll do it for now. We'll have a, another video coming up of a review of the stats. Congratulations. The Oakland A's, they did what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to win a World Series in the dynasty years. They've done just that, and they did it by beating a team traditionally that they did, the Cincinnati Reds. Here they do it. Four games to one. Thanks for checking out this season, folks. I really appreciate it. And we'll be back soon.